Uh, so we are going to interrupt the Lego build again for a couple of days. I've only got one more video left to do, but um, I kind of wanted to get this out of the way first. This is something I picked up this afternoon um, that uh, I'm really excited to take a look at. Uh, it's something I've mentioned recently as uh, being a new kit that just came out within the last maybe two months. Um, and that uh, I'm honestly kind of surprised ever saw the light of day. Um, this is the classic Galactica Viper. Uh, I believe they're also doing a uh, the Galactica herself and a Cylon Raider, but neither of those have come out yet. Um, if you're like me and you're not a fan of classic Galactica, I have watched the show. Um, I didn't like it. Um, it just didn't seem like it knew what it wanted to be. Um, you know, it was too light and fluffy, which considering this is a civilization that has just been exterminated by nuclear holocaust, it seems kind of weird that, uh, that, uh, you know, it would be so, you know, so upbeat. Uh, there were some great episodes. Uh, of the original series, like some some really great ideas, but just overall, I think the show was just poorly handled. Um, so I am very much in the camp that the reimagined series, the reboot, whatever you want to call it, is uh, is vastly vastly superior for all of its flaws. At least I think it handled the idea of a civilization that has been displaced uh, very effectively. Um, but uh, I'm very I'm still very excited. To, uh, to get my hands on this kit. Um, and I do like the idea that, um, that some fans have kind of decided that this design is the Viper, what, what could be considered to be the Viper Mark I. While it has never appeared in the show, um, at least not prominently, I think it appeared in the background of one shot in uh, the pilot. Um, but it's not canonically the Viper Mark I. I just like the idea that uh, um, that it could be considered such. But um, I'm really excited to take a look at this thing, so let's crack it open. Well, first of all, we need to address the elephant in the room. This box art is not great. In theory, it looks really cool. Like, the overall graphic is really neat, but they went for kind of this paint mosaic style like they just added a Photoshop filter over top of the, of the, of the, the, the image, and it just it makes it look just awful. Um, I really hope they get away from this in the uh, the subsequent kits, because I mean, otherwise, if it weren't for that mosaic, which I don't even know how well it translates on video, but you know, there's just like these swirly kind of mock brush strokes in all of the image everywhere, and it just it makes it look really really awful. Um, which is a shame, because, like I said, otherwise, if it weren't for that mosaic effect, the, uh, the box art would look really, really great. Um, I like the classic Galactica logo, and you've got, uh, Apollo and Starbuck here in the corner, looking all smug. Um, but yeah, just that mosaic effect really ruins it for me. Uh, box back, typical, you've got all your call-outs for, uh, future releases, some information about it, includes pilot figure, gives some uh, dimensions, optional landing gear, and some bio info about the, uh, the fighter herself. Uh, first of all, we got the same stand that came with uh, their previous Galactica kits, which I believe is based on the old Aurora kits. Uh, stand. You can see kind of the uh, graphic of uh, Earth is etched in in here, and then it's got the uh, the stand itself, which came off in package. Uh, other clear parts. You got the uh, the canopy. It looks like a very similar mold as uh, was used in the reissue of the uh, the classic Viper back in around 2005. Uh, except this one appears to have uh, some rivet detail, so that's a nice, uh, nice extra little touch. There's also uh, engine inserts, so if you wanted to light this, it would be uh, quite easy to do. 
um, detail on those is actually really neat. Um, some really cool afterburner kind of detail inside. Uh, we got our uh, engine intakes and exhaust. Um, some neat uh, mechanical detail in there. You might be able to kind of make that out. Um, some good uh, ribbing on the engines themselves, but the uh, kind of greebly detail in there is actually really quite cool. Uh, and the intake's fairly ordinary, nothing really to speak of. Um, I always did think it was kind of unusual that ships designed to operate in space would have intakes. I mean, what are they intaking? But, you know, it's just one of those tropes of space combat that uh, I don't think we'll ever truly get away from. Uh, I got some other mechanical detail parts. These probably, I don't know, might be cockpit interior or might be uh, exterior fuselage detail panels. Not really sure. Um, this would appear to be the nose landing gear. That's one thing that was uh, added to this kit that no other version of the uh, the Viper has ever had. Um, of this, this version of the Viper, anyway, has been uh, landing gear. I mean, there have been option kits for it, but uh, they've never been included by default with the model. Uh, and speaking of landing gear, here you can see uh, this would probably be the front um, and uh, the rear matched pairs of landing gear. Um, they're uh, tracked and treaded, or rather they've got skis with rollers, uh, more accurately. And where in the hell inside the body they would ever find this much room to store this landing gear is beyond me. <laughs> it really doesn't look like there's that much space inside the ship. But uh, molding is really neat. Um, some decent detail in there. And you can see the bottom of the rollers uh, coming through the bottom of the skis. Uh, here we got our fuselage. Got uh, etched in panel detail, which unlike the original uh, uh, monogram kit had raised panel lines. So that's nice that uh, it's finally up to a more modern standard. Uh, this would appear to be the vertical fin. Got the uh, wingtip cannons. Uh, some uh, eh, fairly simple molding, but uh, looks all right. And the cockpit tub. Um, Got uh, some instruments and some controls and whatnot in there. Let me see if I can get some better light. Looks pretty good. Uh, and the uh, one fuselage half here is a little bit loose. We've also got the pilot figure. Uh, you can see the left and right arms and the head. The body of said pilot oop, fell off. Um, Hollow interior or behind the back, but uh, otherwise decent looking details. Um, seem to capture the uh, design of the Viper flight suit yeah, fairly well. The uh, pilot's head is pretty generic. Can't tell who it's supposed to be, but. Uh, doesn't have a faceplate though, so you can paint it up as probably just about anybody. But at this scale, it'd be pretty hard to uh, tell who it is. Uh, main wings, nothing much to say. It's got the same uh, etched panel detail as uh, the rest of it. Some interesting uh, mechanical detail here. Uh, this is where the uh, the main guns attach. Eh, not much else to say. Um, I feel like they got a very slight sandpapery texture, but uh, a coat of primer and a light sanding would uh, smooth that out pretty easily. And uh, last up, we got the uh, the main engine housings. Now here we got some really interesting uh, molded detail. Um, looks quite good, maybe like a radiator of some kind here, and uh, I don't know, probably other cooling equipment and whatnot all molded around. There's the uh, ventral section with the landing gear bays, uh, engine intake vents, and uh, the nose intake vent, which you can see actually has a uh, molded vent detail on the inside, 
which is something that the original kit did not have because it was designed with a uh, a rubber band inside the fuselage that would fire a little missile through the uh, through the the nose of the ship. The uh, Cylon Raider did the same thing, but that was only on the very initial release of those kits. Um, but the two the the nose piece was never retooled, so it always had that hole in the front, and it always looked kind of kind of derpy. Uh, we've got our assembly instructions, copy of the uh, lousy box art. Um, overall, they seem a little bit cheaper than the uh, than the reimagined series kits. Oh, it's actually never mind. It's stapled. I thought this was like a fold out. This is a four sheet uh, stapled. Uh, together book. So I take back what I just said about it being cheap. It's actually kind of cool. Um, but uh, though, like I said, the other other kits they were on uh, you know glossy paper, like they were uh, an official colonial document uh, with the corners cut, which always made me laugh. Um, but uh, yeah, instructions seem to indicate the assembly of the model is fairly similar to uh, to the original one. Uh, you know, you got your rear section and your fuselage, um, which uh, combine in pretty much the same way as the original one did. Um, and then last up, you got your uh, painting and marking guide. Um. Oh, how about that? I uh, forgot to mention on the uh, the front of the box, the actually on the shrink wrap that I tore off before I opened this, it included a uh, a Ralph McQuarrie art print, much like Star Wars. Ralph McQuarrie did uh, some preliminary graphic design for the show, and uh, this clearly is uh, one of his early works, uh, showing the uh, the Viper uh, and its pilot, probably Apollo or Starbuck, on some uh, some alien world, which actually looks like it's probably. Based on this uh, this rock structure is probably Vasquez Rocks from uh, outside of Los Angeles, which is where many episodes of classic Star Trek were filmed, such as the episode The Arena, when Kirk fights the Gorn, a big lizard creature, and he climbs up those rocks. Um, very, uh, very memorable, iconic scene. This is actually really neat. I might put this up on my wall. And last, we got our marking sheet. Not much to say. A lot of rust orange. Um, some gray stripes go around the intakes. Red for the wings. Um, oh, there, I thought there looked like there was some uh, some flaking or some damage on it, but it was actually just air, an air pocket inside the uh, the baggie. But you've also got a uh, what I want to call a Dratus display, but in the original series they didn't have Dratus. I don't know what they used, but uh, just some kind of radar or sensor display. So, there we go. So this is another one of those kits. I don't know when I'm ever going to get around to building. Um, I've still got my uh, my Cylon Raider and my Battlestar Pegasus back home in Victoria in a closet waiting to get built. Um, much to my chagrin because those are really nice kits and I really would like to build them. Um, but, as I've said, Previously, you know, I just don't really have the means to do a lot of modeling here. It's just not really feasible because I don't have a compressor. I don't have an airbrush. I don't have a spray booth. I don't really feel comfortable doing airbrushing uh, in a rented apartment anyway. Um, so, yeah, this is just going to get stashed away with, uh, you know, my big... Uh, NX-01 and um, TOS Enterprise and whatever else I've accumulated over the last couple of years. Um, but uh, when I do finally get the chance to build it, I, I think it'll go together really well. Um, this is, it's a really neat design. You know, it's a very classic design. Um, very evocative of its era. Very uh, late 70s. Um, much like the X-Wing or the Y-Wing or a lot of the other Star Wars ships, there's just so much of that really cool added detail. Um, you know, just those little greebly bits that, uh, that get uh, 
that were cannibalized from like tank kits or plane kits. I've, I think I've said before, I would have hated to be a, a modeler in Southern California in the late 70s and early 80s, because it can't have been easy to find a shop that hadn't been picked over by Lucasfilm. <laughs> um, you know, just to, just to be able to actually find uh, anything left in those shops must have been difficult, because you got to figure they would have just come in and cleaned up everything they could. Um, but, uh, you know, I may just suck it up and do, like, a basic, uh, you know, paint-free build, essentially. It's molded more or less in color, so, you know, some hand painting, some fig some detail work here and there, and it'd probably look okay, you know. Um, but uh, I would very much prefer to do it properly. But we'll see. Uh, if I do ever get around to building it, I will talk about, about it at further length. Um, uh, and as for the Lego camper, I'm going to finish editing it as soon as I finish editing this, and it'll probably go up tomorrow or the next day. Uh, and then afterwards I want to talk a little bit about a couple of the Gundam kits that I've bought and built recently, like the Heavy Arms and a couple others. Um, so do stay tuned for all of that. Thank you everyone out there for watching, and happy modeling.